second. Hey, this is Troy Taylor with the Championship Football Coaches Clinic podcast sponsored by First Down Playbook, Rack Coach, Tip of the Spear, the Top Hopper, Sports Workbook. Coach, you get a free sports workbook for coming on. Uh, just when you get it, take a video, take a picture, and and uh, tag them, bro. So we have Bro Man. We have Brian Scott. The first time I remember Coach Scott was at a football clinic down in the OBX, down in Nags Head, the Outer Banks. ODU hadn't even started football yet, but he was the offensive coordinator, and the new head coach was coming in there, um, Big Bob, and Bro Scott now is the offensive coordinator at New Hampshire. And I wanted to come on here and talk a little bit about that ODU offense because I had a friend that coached there with uh, Coach Scott, and I had a running back that played there, and I love Taylor Heineke. My son loves Taylor Heineke, Coach. I'm going to go get my Taylor Heineke signed jersey and hang it up back here. But, Coach Scott, when I found out, you know, Shane always told me you were a Strollo guy. And then when I found out that you had coached with Coach Strollo, I mean, man, for the people that don't know, uh, bro, uh, tell everybody a little bit about yourself and then how you got hooked up with Coach Strollo. Yeah, I'm I'm originally from Maine. Um, not a big, huge football state, if we're being honest. Um, I played at Maine. Uh, I was a quarterback, actually, uh, probably about 40 or 50 pounds ago. Uh, <laughs> and uh, ended up uh, getting in the business. You know, you do what you do early on. You, you work your way up. And um, I was at Tennessee Martin uh, for one year, and I got a call from my former uh, position coach who was the offensive coordinator at Maine at the time, um, Bobby Wilder. And he said, come on back. Um, come back and coach the tight ends. We, we just hired this guy, John Strollo. He, he's brilliant. He, he's unbelievable. And I didn't know at the time. I'm trying to figure everything out, how this business works and all this stuff. And I'm like, sure. And he's like, he's only going to be here for a year. We know he's only going to be here for a year. He's really good. Um, but I want you to come learn that they, they were, they were pounding the ball. They were on a power play. It was tight ends, uh, multiple personnel. but he, he was running a gap power. Uh, he probably had the a gap power, uh, going as good as anybody in the country at the time, you know, uh, uh North Dakota state does it now, but you know, coach Wilder really had that power play going. He's like, come on back, learn from, uh, uh, John, this guy, John Strollo, uh, learn how to coach a line. Uh, and I did, and, he, and sure enough, uh, come back, work with the tight ends, and I'm learning from Coach uh, Coach Stroll. And when you're a quarterback, you know, you, you think you know everything about football. You think, oh, this is easy, and you watch it outside in, and the O-line misses a block, and you yell at them. And they, well, he taught me to watch the game differently, inside out, and came back. Spent the year with him, sure enough. I, I believe he went to Duke. I think he went to Duke mm -hmm. uh, right after the year. Um, like I said, they knew it was, it was a one-year game. And Coach was, didn't want – he wanted some stability at the old line. They they were really running the ball and losing the line guys every year. Guys were moving up. and um, So I did. I spent a, spent a year with Coach Strollo. And really what I learned is I knew nothing about football. And, <laughs> I mean it like it's amazing, like, man, how when you're young you think you know it all and then you, you find out you don't know anything. The smartest guys in the world don't know anything. Don't know anything. I, I knew nothing. And I would sit there and I'd I'd watch Coach Strollo's stuff and, and and he's so smart. I I had a hot yeah, <laughs> he's seeing a different picture than everybody else. And I used to sit there and watch you know, he'd talk about things and then I'd have to go watch it. Even stuff now when he puts it on. I I'm gonna go watch he's talking about Apache. Uh, I got to go back and watch. Like, I can't just watch the clinic and go, oh, yeah, I got this. With his, with him, I got to go back and watch it and watch it. And then it starts to hit you after, like, oh, my, how did he know? How did he find this? How did he see this? He just sees it different. And, you know, I kind of equate him to, like, uh, Bob Ross, the painter. What's his name? Bob Ross, you know? Bob like, Ross. Yeah, yeah, tiny trees. Yeah, and, and, like, nobody can do what Bob Ross does. And Strollo's kind of the same way. He just sees something and. Uh, starts putting a little bit of this on it and a little bit, and, and it comes out and, and you're like, holy boy, does this look good? And 
uh, it was the luckiest thing that ever happened in my career is um, being around him for a year. Re I mean, really, he he changed he changed the way I watched the game. He changed the way I coached the game. Um, you know, it, it was a blessing. It was a true blessing. He he is a genius. Uh, I recommend any O line guy uh, watch his stuff. It's it's next level stuff, and I would recommend don't watch it once and go uh, watch it about a hundred times, and maybe you start. Oh yeah, I see what he sees now, and it, it's really good stuff. Yeah. So, talk a little bit about um, coming to my school and recruiting. And and getting to Facetime your hero and you, you, you talk talk a little bit about that. What was that like? Oh yeah, you know coming coming to LC Bird. Actually, being back down in Virginia, I, I, I really enjoy the state. Um, I think you know obviously you talk about Florida, Texas, California, Georgia. You know top level, but to me, there Virginia, North Carolina, Maryland, that Mid Atlantic. That, there's some good good football players uh, coming back. Um, after being away for a few years, coming back and getting back down there and looking at some guys and seeing, I'm like, oh man, I really liked recruiting here. We were very fortunate to be there. Um, always felt like you could, you know, we had to go do some JUCO stuff uh, for, especially for the line of scrimmage. But um, coming back to LC Bird and then, you know, seeing Coach Taylor again and throws me on with Coach Strollo on FaceTime and another legend, Coach McNally on, you know, on Face. It, it was great. It's great to be back around. Um, we, we're actually fortunate. We're trying to get more guys from Virginia up here. Um, we we actually have uh, our defensive end as a first team All American back to back years uh, as a freshman and a sophomore. He's from Phoebus, which Ooh. Phoebus has got it back going again. Um, yeah, just you know, keep getting guys from Phoebus, coach. Yeah. <laughs> we like those Bill guys. D. And he's Bill D, Bill, coach. God bless Bill D, my, one of my all time favorites. And, uh, but, we, you know, we've got a few guys up here from Virginia trying to get more. Um, this is a great program up here in New Hampshire. And, and then coming back down, there's a lot of kids, you know, your, your kid. We, we recruited Coach Taylor was at Meadowbrook. Uh, we recruited a quarterback from there. He, he ended up playing running back for us. His name was Jer Gerard Johnson. And one of the best human beings I had probably been around. You know, we had a couple of them. You know, another one was Isaiah Harper from Grassfield. Just great human beings. And they made your program so much better. Not necessarily the football. Yeah, yeah, they were really good football players. They did a great job, had great college careers. But their character, you know. And I remember when we went and recruited Gerard from you, Coach, you're like, this kid, everything you said about him, it was dead on. You know, high character, work ethic. Uh, brought our program to another level, you know, just being around people. And I always felt it as a coach. I'm like, oh, man, he's a good human being. I got to be more like him, you know. <laughs> uh, but I, I love the state of Virginia. I really do. Yeah, I do I do too, Coach. So you came on the clinic this weekend to hear Coach Strollo, and then I asked you to come on now and, you know, talk a little bit about, you know, getting the opportunity to go down there to ODU and start that program new. And I remember y'all had another quarterback and then boom, Taylor Heineke. Yeah. Um, you know, when we went down there, I had no expectations, no idea what we were getting into. Obviously I'm a main kid. I'd spent the majority of my life up in the Northeast, um, you know, and coach got the call and, and said, Hey, let's go. Um, and when we got there, like, well, this place is a gold mine, absolute gold mine. And uh, we were very fortunate to get there. Administration was great. They were very supported. They were supportive. They wanted to win. That, that's the biggest thing. They wanted to be good. They wanted to win. Um, and then uh, when we got going, we actually took – we were out JUCO recruiting for old linemen, but we needed a punter. And um, I went out to College of the Desert. Uh, and met our first quarterback. I, we were actually going to take him as a punter. We were going to put him on a uh, half scholarship, I believe. And uh, Coach Wilder's like, no, nah, put him on full. We're going to give him a shot at quarterback too. Okay, well, well, we did. And at the time, we weren't trying to be that air raid that it evolved to. Uh, the, flavor that, the flavor at the time was uh, Pat White and uh, – Slayton at West Virginia and Rich Rod and the QB zone read game and 
QB run, and this kid fit the bill. And, and um, so we took him. He came in. He won the job. Clearly won the job. Um, like I said, it, it was it was locked. To t- you know, we were trying to get him as a punter, and um, he comes in and uh, and he won. I believe we were nine and two, eight and three in his first two years. Um, so we had a heck of a record. We were we were running QB power with the bash stuff. We were running QB sweep with the bash stuff, zone read, play action pass. Um, and then we moved up into the CAA, which everybody, know, you know, top FCS conference in the country. Not We weren't sure how it was going to go. We, we said if we could be 500, that would be great. If we just win a couple games in the CAA, uh, that would be great. Um, and our quarterback, I think we were 3-0 at the time, and in our first conference game, uh, no, our second. Sorry, we lost our first one at Delaware. Um, they beat us. Uh, they are pretty good. Yeah, they beat us in a one-score game. Uh, we didn't, you know, we didn't lose a whole lot of games in in the conference, but they beat us uh, in a one-score game. The next week, Demarco, our starting quarterback, goes down, high ankle sprain because we were running the ball. He was running the ball. I mean, he 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 was running the ball a lot. He was a running back back there that could throw. I mean, he was a really good runner. Um, you know, tough in between the tackles. Well, you got a high ankle sprain, um, and Taylor comes in. And like I said, we were running a lot of QB run stuff. We knew it wasn't Taylor's stuff. We did have a, a five-man stuff in, uh, spread out stuff. Um, and Taylor comes in, and um, we start throwing around a little bit. And he goes off, and he just goes off in the second half. He's like, oh, wow, this is great. We get to the next week, and it's Taylor's first start. Um, and we knew DeMarco was going to be out for, for, for an extended period of time. And, um, we go through the first half and it's okay. I mean, we, we, you know, we're playing with a tight end and we're not really pushing the tempo. And then at the end of the first half, we're at Rhode Island. Um, we get in a two minute drill. It's a tough game back and forth game. And, uh, we get in the two minute drill and, and Taylor takes us down the field and it, Two minute drill, and and from there on out, we took the tight. We just played two minute the rest of the time with Taylor. It was, you know, we knew we had something special with the kid, and he liked to play with pace. He could figure out shapes, uh, in a in a blink of an eye. Um, he understood. Yeah, talk, talk about that shapes, because I remember Shane, who left John and came to Virginia Union to be my GA. He used to talk about you, he, Coach. He thought you and Ron Wickham walked on water. I mean, he thought y'all walked on water, and he said that you saw the game in shapes. Shapes. So talk about that. When you, what, what do you mean by that? Yeah, it, numbers counts and shapes and angles. And, um, you know, Taylor started out as an engineer major, and um, he he understood it. He wasn't a vocal kid. You know, he wouldn't come in and say, hey, let's do this, let's do that. But if you gave him stuff, he could figure it out so fast where the number count was. You know, I'm, I'm going back and watching it now. I haven't watched – I haven't watched uh, Taylor. I haven't watched our stuff back then in a long time. Uh, I had to dig, dig into some files and go pull out some games. Uh, when you asked me to come on, I was like, "Oh well, I gotta find this stuff." But and then I go back to it. I'm like, "Yeah, he really, he really, really got it." And, and it's the shapes and the angles uh, and the number counts. And we were playing with tempo, and he could do it so fast, and he could mani- manipulate the defense um, so well. Uh, and we didn't we didn't do a lot. And that was by design, you know. We 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 always felt. You know, you talk about Coach Wicker. You know, I, I've been blessed. Um, you know, as an offensive coordinator, I've had. We had Ronnie uh, Ronnie at uh, Wickham. At he's at Buffalo now as the quarterback coach. I was blessed to have him at o- ODU. You know, when you're a coordinator and you're the O line coach, and then you, you got to trust your QB coach. And he was a great one. And then I'm, I'm blessed here at New Hampshire. I got a young, a young quarter quarterback coach here. Uh, who's got a ton of talent. He's going to be a star in this profession. And, um, but, you know, we, but we, we tried to get people lined up to make sure they knew what they were doing. We didn't do a bunch formationally because we knew Taylor could, could count the, could count the shapes or see the shapes and get us to the right. If we knew we put the people in the right positions uh, at all times, he was going to get to the ball to the right person. And we didn't want kids confused out there. You know, we didn't want wrong routes or this or that. And we kept it simple for our wideouts so they could play fast, um, you know. So uh, it, 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 we kind of fell into that, all this space and all that stuff. We, we kind of fell into it, and it was really good for us. Yeah, Who did you study? Because I know Shane used to tell me, y'all used to watch the NFL tape. 
I mean, who did you really study um, when y'all really started developing this offense with Taylor? Boy, I can't even remember to be honest. Like I said, we were. We I think were, it was the Eagles. Was it the Eagles with Chip Kelly? Uh, we, it, it probably had some elements of that. Absolutely. Um, I, I, I'll be honest. I can't remember. I'm sure it had some elements of, uh, you know, Chip Kelly stuff. I'm sure it had some, you know, um, but I can't, I can't remember, you know, I can't remember where Mike Leach was at at the time either. I, I know that would have been a guy that we watched a lot. Um, like I said, we were diving into the West Virginia stuff, the Rich Rod stuff. And we were, you know, Hey, this is good stuff. And, uh, and I think we kind of, you know, just molded some stuff on our own a lot too. You know, this is how we're going to do it. We're going to practice it. And, and I think we did a really good job coaches, you know, every year we used to it, it, minor adjustments, but clean stuff up, you know, coach Wickham and I, um, we'd, we'd sit down at the end of the year and how does it get more efficient? You know, how do we get this more efficient? And, you know, you, sometimes as a, as a coordinator, you're in your system and things get jumbled up. You know, you, you put this adjustment in this week. Well, what are we going to call it? We call it this. And then, by you know, after a year or two, um, you know, you got a bunch of, of, of uh, language that you're like, oh, man, this doesn't yeah. make sense. I always thought we did a good job of sitting down at the end of the year and then finding a couple of things. I don't know that there was anybody specific we sat and watched and said, let's do it like this. Baylor, I think, was coming on the scene and um, I, we started getting to the big splits. And did we do it like Baylor? Probably not, but it was similar. Um, you know, but we always, did, I th always thought we did a, a pretty good job of sitting down and cleaning th the language up at the end of the year and um, try, making it as efficient as possible. But t talk a little bit about, I mean, like Coach McNally, he is the ultimate um, growth mindset guy. He's always changing. He's always evolving. And I talked to Shane last night and told him you were coming on. And he said, well, Troy, you know, he's running the same thing at New Hampshire. So talk a little bit about that. Are you running the same thing in New Hampshire that you're going to talk about today? No, uh, no, we are the, at New Hampshire, we are the absolute opposite, the opposite of what, what we're going to talk about today. And to me, it always starts with the quarterback. You know, what, what does mm. he do well? What does your quarterback do well? And, um, you know, Taylor was a spread guy. He, he loved, he loved the space. He loved the number, you know, our quarterback now, he, he's, he's a, he's a pocket guy. He's a drop back guy, play action guy. Um, likes to pump it down the field, uh, trying to get him to check down a little bit more, but I get it. I mean, he's got a big arm and, uh, we, you'll see today when I talk about our offense back then, it was all space. We wanted grass space and, um, we do it the opposite now. And our quarterback's the opposite of Taylor, the exact opposite of Taylor. And that's why we do it like that. When I got here, they'd, they'd been kind of in a, a rut a little bit on offense, uh, trying to figure some things out. And, and, you know, I think the biggest thing was like, all right, let's start with our quarterback. What does he do well? Okay. And who's our best player? It's it's our running back. And we're all, not all, we're bunch, tight splits. We are pro style, under center, uh, jet sweep, play action, duo, um, and wide zone. And man, a lot of, a, a lot of similarities as far as philosophically, we don't do a whole lot. We do the same as when we were at Odie. We don't, we, you know, we run our four or five run plays. We, our play actions maybe change a little, but from week to week, we have our concepts in when we get in, we're not inventing plays, uh, week to week. You know, I tell our guys all the time, look, if you want something in, don't wait until week three, when we got three days to practice it. Because I yeah. promise you, I'm not calling it. I'm not – if I don't see it right, and, and, and I'm not calling it. We need to practice it for three, four weeks. You know, you know, we'll work it into like when we're doing good on good. Let's try it out against our defense and see what it looks like. But what we're doing now is the exact opposite of what we did then. Condensed, bunched, you know, duo. We're huddling. We're under center. And, uh, you know, you, talk, you evolve. You evolve as a coach. And – uh, you can't. Uh, I look. You look at science. It's science. You know. They always say science is always evolving. Well, so is football, and football is always evolving. And I, I love. Yeah. Yeah. You, you go. You go back to 1980s, man. Yeah. I mean, and, and I wouldn't be surprised if someday the wishbone comes back, and you know we're back to that. Um, 
but I, I really, I really, I loved what we did at ODU. Um, it was great for what we were at the time, but I'm, I'm really, um, I really love what we're doing now at New Hampshire. I really do. Yeah. Um, you know, are, are we scoring? Are we scoring? It? No. I mean, we, we average around 30 points a game, and, you know, which we have a really good defense. And our coach, is, our head coach is great. He was a – our head coach, young Ricky, uh, Ricky Santos, who's going to be a superstar someday too, he, he was a wide open – I mean, he started with Chip Kelly uh, when they were wide open and got this thing open. But he's 100% bought in like, hey, our defense is really, really good. Okay, how how do we uh you know how do we win games? Okay, so what we're doing now, I think we're playing with about nine or ten possessions a game right now. Now, as you always say, you screw up one play in a drive, you're like, oh man, we're getting a lot of possessions back now. You know, you go backwards, but um, I love it. I I really do. I don't care about the point. I'm at a point in my career. I don't care about oh we want to be the number one offense in the country. That was awesome at ODU. It was awesome, and you can win that way. Tennessee's doing it. Look at what they're doing. You know, that you can who cares? You know, who gets a, the credit? And I'm at a point in my career I could really care less. Uh we we want championships. I want to be around championship teams and I'll do what's best for the team. You know, mm-hmm. I, I used to be a, a defensive coordinator killer. <laughs> but you know, guy, why is the defense while they're on the field for 15, 16, 17 possessions a game, the defense is gonna give up points. And you gotta accept that. And you, you gotta kind of pump them along if you're going to run that tempo stuff you got to help them out too like guys you're doing great you're doing great you know and now it's the other way around i'm gonna we're trying to limit because eight i think um we played against a game against dartmouth this past year i i i think they only had i was talking our defensive coordinator here was my college roommate so it works out pretty good we're really on the same page but they, i think they ran three plays in, in the first quarter and he's like, this is unbelievable. Now, he had some of his older linebackers coming in like, coach, I need some reps, you know, like because he's rotating his guys in. But, um, you know, we were playing at 55, 60 plays a game, and um, it's it's good stuff. And our head coach, is, like I said, he's bought into it. He was a spread guy, wide open, you know, and he's like, yeah, this is the best way to win right now for who we are. Uh, we play great special teams, uh, you know, so we'll punt that ball down to the five-yard line and cover it and make a team go – long and are we in shootouts at 50 to 45 like we no uh you know our games are grinds and i love it i, I think it's great uh, you know defensive coordinators probably used to hate working with me now they probably love it you know yeah. like oh this is great they're gonna walk out of the huddle you know yeah just control the tempo this way sure i'm gonna present your screen so this is probably the out of all the teams i've ever seen y'all were the most wide open i mean i thought y'all were in the short punt formation I mean, sometimes he was like six yards deep, and y'all would punt it from six yards deep, and y'all would go for it on fourth down. We we did, um, <laughs> we did. So I, should I pull up my screen here? Yeah, I, I got I got it, Coach. Gotcha. Yeah, you, it's, we it's on the screen right now. Yeah, um, we did. We we actually put our quarterback at at six, <laughs> which is deeper than most, and um, you can see our splits here. Our base splits were. Split the numbers in the sidelines for the outside guys, our inside guys. We're splitting the uh, the offensive tackle to the wideouts. Um, and you can see uh, – and this is where Taylor really got a good, good picture here and understand angles. And I think probably the first thir- 30 plays of this cut that I found, I was able to put together, um, a lot of it is, is just uh, run – I don't call it RPO. I call it hot, you know um, – RPO good box, to me. bad box, good box, yeah, bad good box. box. There you go, yeah, yeah. RPO to me is you know getting in heavy sets. You're really looking at a safety. Um, I this is more hots to me. Um, I think this is a great way to handle run blitzes. Uh, and that's to me that's the thing that uh, we're trying to get across. The everybody's run blitzing, whether it's the corner from the boundary, the field nickel, an inside linebacker, a safety from the boundary. Everybody is uh, run blitzing now on first and second down, and you better have answers. Uh, you can see we're wide open here. And like I said, I only had a few games that I could find, but pulled up a couple clips. Um, talk, talk a little bit about seeing a different defense every week. I mean, right now you got a 4 1 box, you got basically that three safety look, you got a, a monster man like right behind the mic. I mean, 
did you see a different defense every week? Uh, so when we when we started running this, coach, um, we, we about a couple games in. Once we got going in in 2012, and we're really going, really rolling. Um, we were throwing for about 400 yards a game. Uh, we stopped um, really scheming defenses. Uh, we used to grab the GAs or whoever was running the scout team defense, and we just told them, find different blitzes, blitz us. I don't care, you know, three-man, four-man, because every week, every week we got something different that defenses didn't do, you know, which I always thought was to our advantage. You know, they say, oh, we want to line up. We want to know what they're doing. Um I thought it was to our advantage because they they weren't good at their scheme. You know, they were doing different things. And it was junk junk defense um, week to week. So we'd grab the scout team guys. Hey, just blitz us every play. Mess with the cover. I didn't. We didn't care, you know. we were, Our big thing was protection. That was our big thing with what we were doing. And so we always started on Sundays. We'd meet by ourselves um, and come up with your own ideas. And we like I said, we didn't change a lot. But Monday morning, uh, Ronnie Wickham would come in. We'd sit down and go through every blitz that we could possibly see, and uh, and, and just hammer it out. So so Taylor knew, so Taylor knew that um, he he could be protected. That's all we talk about Monday morning. That was our biggest uh, our biggest deal with this offense was the protection, um, and that's what I loved about it. We had answers for blitzes uh, where he felt he could check protection and get everything picked up and um you know so we didn't get confused like i said we weren't doing a lot either you know so we, we pretty much by week six or seven had seen pretty much everything you could do you know and had answers and you know we talked protectionally i i remember and taylor was so good at it he was and, and ronnie was great at teaching it and uh uh you know we played louisiana tech um in 2014 Manny we, Diaz. Manny Diaz was the defensive coordinator, and uh, they were given every blitz. I, I, you know, we hadn't. That's one we hadn't seen. You know, and uh, I remember I used to. I actually worked with the offensive scout team during practice. I didn't go with you. But Taylor was so good. You know, we we were really good. We weren't doing a whole lot. I, I always liked watching it on film anyway, as opposed to standing there making corrections on the field because uh, we were playing so fast. So I'd go down with the offensive scout team so I could try and develop the old line, you know, the, the young old lineman. That's what I wanted to do is get those guys ready to play. And I remember I uh, was on the field. We are playing against Louisiana Tech. We had seen every uh, – they got us on a blitz. They had drawn something up. They got us. Our protection call was wrong. I remember Taylor snapped. Uh, he may have thrown a ball on the ground or something. This is, this is messed up, uh, you know. Uh, this is we we can't and I look down I'm like well just go to the next and I remember coming in I'm like guys and people say oh is it easy to coach tail no you better better on your stuff you know your stuff better be right or he's gonna call you on it you know and um and uh, we go so we went in sure enough we watched every single play that La Tech ran that year on defense we watched every single one for another five hours just to figure it out you know to make sure because he wanted everything uh, you know tip top from protectionally and that's what we liked we we like picking up blitzes you know and um it, that's what this system allowed us to do and I, it was great a little tougher now you you know with what we're doing now you start bunching things up and uh you know there's, there's a lot of people in there and and uh you this spread stuff you can kind of see things a little better but i'll start here coach okay our first objective our first objective was um if we had access we were taking it does that make sense yes sir um, if we had so right now, you got to run in a pass on good box, bad box, or whatever Taylor good wants box, to do. bad. And this is a good box, this is a five box. And <laughs> yeah. the first thing we said was, if you got access, take it. Now, this right here, it, I think this is the first play of the game, to be honest with you. Okay, um, this is the best thing that can happen on the first play of the game is you attack, you attack that outside field now they got to defend what the whole field right yeah they they have to defend that now and this is something w here we got to get better at and obviously we're not a spread team but you cannot just let teams 
a lot of teams in this league, they'll just give you the field. Yeah, and that's cross country. You know, we'll give you the field access. You better take it. You better make them defend it, or that box is going to get heavy. There's nothing better to start a game than ripping a hitch. Uh, a hitch route, easy throw, easy completion, get them going. But now they got to make a decision. They got to make. Oh, we're going to give up. The, we're going to let them do this all game. And this yeah. is, was the beauty of uh, Taylor. He had no problem going 48 for 60, you know, with 280 yards and just fight boredom. Fight, fight boredom. boredom. Talk about that staying. Fight boredom. Fight boredom. And it's easy. You get in the season. You guys are all sitting around as coaches. You're game planning. Oh, let's do this. They did. This. Let's do this. Well, let's just run what's working right now. You know? <laughs> just change, you know, make it look a little different shape wise and let's run what's working. And, it's easy. It's easy to get caught up. Like, oh, we're running this, we're running this. Well, it's working, you know. Like, fight boredom, and you'll see us. We ran the same plays all the time, and we weren't. We were running a little gut play here, a little man scheme. Um, I don't oh. run this anymore like this, but I, I love it. Watch, I started watching this again. I'm like, yeah, I kind of like the angles we got here on the on the gut scheme. But you can see Taylor's just smoking out a hitch first play of the game, and right now that starts. That's going to expand your defense. They got to now say, all right, well, we got to do something with the field. That's a 10 yard gain on first down, first play of the game. And you can see we come back. I don't know if this is the second play or third play. Um, we're, we're going to go to a wide zone. And you can see already what that coach, you can see, right? I, I, like I said, I, the I think corners are up now. now. Yeah. Hey, they're bang. hard. Yep. Done. Now, now we've changed the game already. The game's already changed, all right? They didn't want to play press. They do. Um, we're actually running a wide zone here. And they're um, cheating the mic in. That is there a is that a – that's the referee. The mic is cheated to the field. The mic is cheated to the field, okay? We, we know something's out of place here. Something's out of place. We know we're getting the field uh, blitz here. Now, and this is, this, this is where this system really works and um, – if we run wide zone two, our wideouts are going to block. If we ran inside zone two, they're going to run an RPO tag that we declare. So wide zone two, they're going to block unless we tag something that tells them that they're running a concept. So Taylor right now, um, we're running wide zone two. He knows his read, his read is over on this side right here. He knows they're blocking. Well, he's got to make a decision. We got a bubble on right here, which – turns him into a triple read. He is going to read uh, the edge man on the line of scrimmage right here. If that thing bends, he's going to pull off it and run triple option. Obviously, it comes from so wide. Okay, it stays out. He gives the ball. And we actually, Coach, you know who this is? That's Gerard, ain't it? That's Gerard. Yeah. Yep, that's Gerard. Great young man. Great young man. Okay, we're, here's our wide zone. We're doing it with a man scheme. Like I said, I don't do this. Uh, I don't do this anymore um, with the man scheme. We did this for angles. He's going to block back. We're going to the mic. Okay. And you got a hat for a hat. I mean, we got a hat for a hat. We're in ain't nobody table. coming loose on Taylor, you know? Yeah. So Taylor is now triple reading. If that thing bends, he's going to pull it. Um, Four is going to have to rock back over to take that if it does bend, uh, which allows us to see how slow four is getting there. Now we just outrun it. Okay, we get a little jazzed up inside here with our center gets spiked a little bit. We clean it up with our puller. And four is just late to the party because now he's got some QB responsibility. And you can yeah. see, like I said. Ali. We, that, we're, that Mike can't run with him. No, no, he cannot. Yeah. That makes it tough, you know. I was a good coach when I had him playing quarterback. Oh, yeah. Snap yep. it to him every play, baby. Actually, you know, I th yeah, we're playing NC State here. Uh, he may have rushed for 100 yards in this game. He, he, he went off in this game. Oh, you know what? He didn't rush for 100 He because we flipped him the ball on some draws that he popped out, which were passing yards. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Take away the rushing. So, hey, same thing. Two-by-two two formation. Okay, now we've hit him with the wide zone. And we're looking at this from up top, okay? Taylor has a two-way go here. He's got a great box, 
okay? We're saying up top, hey, Taylor, now you read. We'll get him on the sideline. Hey, when we get back in this two-by-two two two on our hitches, uh, your reads now going to come opposite, okay? They're fitting this. They're fitting this opposite the back, okay? I I now, Coach, I, I don't like running, and, and Strollo brought this up the other day. I hate running sidecar stuff out of the gun now. Um, obviously, we did back then because we were, you know, throwing it all over the place. Uh, but like like he said, it, it dictates it dictates to the defense, you know, where, where they're going to call their front. I, I worked with a defensive coordinator one year, David Blackwell, Real, really good defensive coordinator. He yeah, he was at Clemson. Yeah, he was at Clemson. That's absolutely right. I know, yeah. I know his brother. Yep, his brother's a great coach. And David was at uh, ECU one year. They had the worst defense in the country, and he came in in one year and he flipped the whole thing. It was, but he he actually he he would wait until the back declared. Then he would send his call in. You know, and that's how you know you're out schemed here. You know, he's got you. He's got you where he wants you. So this look right here, we got a great box. He gives the ball great. We'd come off on the sideline, and now we would start telling him, hey, your read's going to come opposite here, okay? Your read is now going to come to that field nickel opposite of where you turn. And I think if you're doing this stuff, you can't just be a one-way RPO, all right, a one-way throw. You have to have the ability to put it in, snap back out, and throw the other way, or else they're going to take away your RPOs. Our quarterback here has done, done a great job of figuring out, you know, we, we we let him dictate on duo a lot. We we can flip it either way for him. We can call it. But there's times he'll, he'll, he'll just flip the back on his own and from the pistol and on the RPO stuff and tell him which way he wants to go, if he wants to turn his back to the read or, or get it um, where he can see it. You can see we got a great box here. And this is dry. And this is a good I hit on first down. down. Yeah, just obviously we're running the hitch up top, but that read guy is so far away now by the space we've created. Okay. Even if he makes a tackle there, we got four. Great job by Gerard and then burying his for a first down. But that's one we'd come over on the sideline and start talking about hey, Taylor, keep an eye, keep your eyes out to the field now, opposite the way you're giving it. I mean, and y'all are playing against a BCS team and y'all are one double a right here, right? Uh, this was our first year in FBS, I believe. Oh, what? Yeah, this was our first. Now uh, this NC state, this, uh, I always, we played, we played uh, NC state, I think three times. Um, I had a tremendous c amount of respect coach for uh, the, the way when you'd come on the field pregame, you could tell Coach Doran was recruiting to a model, and because all their guys looked the same at every position. You know, their safeties were tall and long, their corners were long, uh, their D line was big and long. You know, you could tell he he had a a picture of what he wanted to look like, and it was not fun going. Now we're having some success here, and this and that, and and a lot of it. You know, we were fortunate to have Taylor and. We had some good players outside too. We had some wideouts that could really play. Uh, it's a couple NFL guys, and um, but I always had a tremendous amount of respect for uh, Coach Doran and the program. Even now, I mean, he, his yeah. program has been as solid and steady. But as you can tell he recruits to a model. He's got what he wants. He goes to get what he wants, and it looks the same, you know, across the board. Same thing. We're this is all the first drive right here. Look at that. Um, They're playing three over two. Three two over fields. two here. They're, <laughs> they're, walk, they're walked out to the boundary. You got a two high safety. This is an easy as read as, as uh, Taylor will get um, all year. And this is what helps, you know, you play with that tempo. You can see the chains are barely getting set up. The they're, they're trying to make calls, and we're ready to go. You can see the field guys, the safety, the nickel, the back safety. They're trying to make calls, and we're rolling. They're in a blitz. Okay, and we're hitting them with a little uh, gut. We used to run a gut play uh, similar to an inside zone with a man scheme inside to create angles. Yeah, that, that was where you've been wrapping that guard in there, but now they just brought him in the B gap. The they brought him in the B. We threw the brakes on. Our center can stay with this on the man call. 
Okay, I'd like to see our, our right guard here throw the brakes on a little quicker on that blitz. To me, that's that's easy blitz. That guy's legs are staggered. Throw the brakes on, get back to it. But we, this is as easy as a read as Taylor will get. And there it goes. Woo! Same thing. We never got out of two by two. Now, as we get down to the – Taylor's trying to check. This is what I was saying protectionally. You can see he's trying to get this pointed out. He's trying to change the point here, okay? Um, and we change ours. We had been running hitches. Now we change it when we get down here in the red zone. Again, as easy a read as, as Taylor. He has a two-way go here. He can take either guy. We prefer to start to the boundary. Easier throw, all things being equal. You get it here. And this is stealing to me. Are you stealing yeah, 10 yards here down in the red zone? That's y'all's fade. Fade, oh, yeah. Man. We called it fade. Uh, whatever you call it. Fade flat. Uh, we, we called it fade, yes. Yep. And that's I mean, double tagged. He if he got up being man free. They can't, man, can't cover the fly route. It, it, and if they come down, we're probably throwing it outside, or he'd have the option to switch it to what we called safe, which is an inside fade with a slant. And that depends on who's in the slot if he was going to switch it. I mean, what, what's going through Taylor's mind here? I mean, he sees that it's middle of the field closed. It's going to be man free. I mean, he knows. you can't. I'll tell you exactly what's going through his mind. He sees the blitz. He knows he's throwing. I think he triggered the snap count early. I could be wrong. Either that or the center um, got the snap count wrong. But what he's doing right here, and like I said, this is something Wickham and I, when we were working together, would sit down Monday morning. We'd go through every blitz and how we were how we were tagging it. We had, you know, Roy right outside, Rip right inside, Liz uh, left inside, Lou left outside. Uh, we were trying to get this pointed out. Um, you can tell he's trying to pick it up. We do fall into it. And, and this was like, and I tell this guy all the time, and it, it frustrates me beyond no end, Coach, like, when you sit there, and here's how I talk about it. You get a six-man fire, and quarterback's trying to hold the ball, pump it down the field, and the wide <laughs> yeah. or whoever on staff is going, well, we're picked up in a six-man blitz. And I don't say you're hot. If we're picked up, we're I call it warm. You know, if it's a six-man blitz, that ball better come out. You better pick – we say you are warm. You're not hot, but you're warm. That ball better come out. I hate it when say, well, we should be picked up. Why is he not blocking? Well, if they're bringing six, we're blocking with six. There's a chance somebody's going to break down at some point. And this is where I always thought Taylor was really good, um, just kicking the ball. Bang. And that's very, very frustrating. Uh, we're overmatched here. This D-line, these linebackers, oh, yeah. we're overmatched. You know, we can't block these guys um, on a regular basis. You know, just by him kicking the ball – that's the best friend of the old line right there. And best so, some of the some of these coaches that I talk to that are not at successful programs, they're always like, "Well, my offensive line, you know, they aren't very strong, or they don't like the weight room, and you know, well, you know, we can't block these guys." Well, dude, if you can't run block, then you better be doing something like this because. You, you bet, and the other one <laughs> yeah. that, that 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 helps it out now, we're not spread like this; we're bunch condensed. The jet game, you know, I, yeah. I was fortunate. I got to work with Coach Steiny, uh, Coach Steinspring. No, yeah, and for a year, and um, yeah, he had wrong, worked with, with wrong side runs or whatever they call it. You know, I mean, yeah, he you know, worked with black people. Black yeah, people. he had worked with Canada, and he taught me the jet game. And we're a big jet team here, and that's another one. If you're an offensive line coach or offensive coordinator. And you feel like you're overmatched at you're overmatched up front. Um, you know, the jet game, this stuff is great, just kicking the ball out. The jet game is a great equalizer as well. You don't have to sit there, you know, it's perimeter, perimeter blocking is what it yeah, turns you, into. I mean, it's very similar what, to a kick return. It really is. I mean, what what you're what you're saying to me is kind of like there's a reason people run the wing T. And a lot of times it's because they don't have linemen that can match up. So misdirection. 
I mean, the misdirection and Absolutely. not blocking people when getting the ball to the perimeter. Steve Gukian, who's a he, he's a big follower of the podcast, Coach. Good stuff, Coach. Thanks. Can you talk a little bit about what you teach the quarterback to look at when he snaps back on the backside RPO? It's going to be the safety. He's going to look at the safety and the leverage, okay? Um, now, what, what do you see here? We have been two-by-two two the whole game. What do we do when we get close down here? You we we would bring somebody back in. Why? Because yeah. there's a good chance you're going to get, uh, and you can see it here, some type of seven-man. We, we're we still running zone here. We're running zone. Um, our running back should block that right here. Okay, he doesn't. So Taylor gets smoked. Um, but we should have this. That's why we bring the extra hit in, divide zone. And here is – one of my favorite down in the red zone. Um, and he's taking matchup here. He's taking matchup. And you say, why doesn't he throw the boundary? Because he's looking at this going, I have all this space on this side, number one. I can miss wherever. We have the inside fade here, the fade here. I can miss in all this area out here. And not just that. And I couldn't tell you how many touchdowns we used to score uh, we, with uh, Richmond uh, Duhart. Uh, you played against Duhart. Duhart from Manchester, yeah. Oh, he was an animal. Absolutely. I mean, he's like Anquan Bolden. Anquan Bolden was the greatest seam receiver of all time. Yeah. I think that's what this is right here. I mean, and, Anquan Bolden scored probably 100 touchdowns in his career on this. Yeah, and this is our, our this is actually a quarterback right here who started for us at quarterback. This is uh, Dave Washington. Ended yeah. up having a 10-3 and three year in 2016 and won the Bahamas Bowl as a quarterback. But he's in the slot here. And you can see, hey, I'll, I'll just – I know this does – offensively, this is Gerard right here, former quarterback. David, former quarterback. I love quarterbacks. I love quarterbacks. Yeah, because, I mean, if you're a high school player and you're that good, you probably need to be touching the ball. So that's where they put their best player. That's where they put the best player. And Dave, this is a great ball here. Like I said, he's got all this room to miss. Throws back shoulder. Again, the ball's coming is he throwing out. It at the, is he throwing it at the defender's back helmet? Because I remember uh, saying. Ear hole. Yep, he's throwing it right through his ear hole. Great job. So that, that was one drive right there where we probably called three different plays. That's it. But he he made it look like we called seven, eight different plays. Just I mean, yeah, y'all running the running little defense. butt. Y'all running y'all's little gut, and then y'all RPOing with all hitches or either, you know, the fade. Yep. That's it. So now we come back. We ran our two two by two. All right. Now we're coming back to our three by one. We're going to try and get a picture early. Same thing. This is same side zone, same side inside zone. And it goes back to the sidecar deal. To me, if you're a bunch of sidecar, you got to run some same side stuff, or that defense is going to slant and spike and spark and run blitz you off your back's alignment. And we're running same side, inside zone here. Okay, this is another one. We would come back to Taylor and say, hey, if that mic walks out, put your eyes back to him, okay? They got a too high shell. If that mic walks out, go ahead and put your eyes. So we could throw back to the uh, H here. Yeah, and y'all got the numbers up top. We got the number. We're good. So – Here's the other thing, and another pet peeve of mine because I've been coaching for 20 years, and, you know, the older you get, the, the more things bother you and, you know, drives you crazy. So if you're going to run RPO, you got to give the quarterback something to lean to. All right, we're going to lean run. All right, if you're not sure, if it's close, give the ball. Or for us at, at, at this point at Old Dominion with Taylor, we would say lean pass. And what does that mean? Well, we're good, good here. We can run the ball or we could smoke it, okay? And what what do you want? That's that's And with our jet game, our quarterback has the option to give the zone or give the jet. We tell him going into the game, when we run the jet, we're leaning jet. When we run the zone, we're, we're, we're leaning zone. You know, we're giving him tips to what we want. And when coaches, you know, they're running RPO, or you're sitting there watching on Sunday – and they're going, that should be a throw. Like, it's gray out there. This stuff happens fast. And if you're going to sit there and say it's black and white, 
Why isn't he throwing it? And that's don't run this stuff. You know, I, me personally, I love to give our quarterbacks the, the, the control of the whole offense to where they feel like they're in charge. As long as they're putting the time in uh, with the video, like our quarterback here, he acts like a professional here at New Hampshire. He, he's in here all day watching tape. And do you think I'm going to restrict him to, you have to do it this way? No, I'm going to let him be, you know, some of the best ideas that I've ever come up with weren't my ideas. It was number 14's ideas right here. He figured stuff out that I just, you know, I claim and say we're teaching it, you know, like it, it, with the RPO stuff, you got, you got to give the quarterback, Hey, we're leaning, uh, we're leaning run here or we're leaning throw. Now this was a first and 10 play. So we would have told them we're leaning run here. You can see that's in between. That could go either way. Four freezes. You can see four where he has his eyes freezes. And by our spacing, by our spacing right now, Ford's just late to the part. You know, it's tough to get back in there. Like I said, this is a same side inside zone. I wish our tackle wouldn't get spiked here. He does. He covers it up, stays thick, but this is a good hit by the back. Same thing. We probably I, ran three by one down the field. Now they got four again. guys out there, man. Yep. Now they walked way out. I guarantee Taylor's putting his eyes right here. Okay. If that guy screwed in hard, he would throw it to our X. I think our X should be running a fade. He looks like he's blocking. He should be running a fade. But same thing. We're same side inside zone. And you can see he's freezing at the snap. He reads run, but he's coming from 10. It's a four-yard, five-yard hit. All that space. All that space. Same thing. I believe this is a first down play. You can see where Taylor snapped his eyes back. Right here. Boom. He sees too high. Okay. He snapped his eyes back to the mic. The mic freezes. We know we can put that ball in there. Yeah, t talk a little bit about because I mean I talked to somebody and I was like, well, dude, there's a lot of different RPOs. Like it started off with it's kind of like guy pulls it, he's running, the quarterback is running, and he's throwing like a smoke or a bubble. And then it's like this stuff is good box, bad box to me. Like, okay, if we got a good box, then hand it. Yes, if it's a bad box, throw the quick game. But then you got the stuff where the guy's sticking the ball in there going down the field. If we're running our bubble game, we have the option to get into triple, and we're doing it here where we're running true triple option. He's pulling it. Our quarterback here now is pulling it, and he's running true triple option. He'll run. He'll be five yards downfield. We're telling that bubble guy to stay in pitch phase, stay behind him, and he'll smoke that thing from you know six yards down the field. He'll throw it out there behind mm -hmm. him to the bubble guy. This right here, to me, this is the great equalizer with uh, – run blitz and we're just going to try and smoke if we so we've got a couple run hits going right now so what, what's their answer going to be they're going to have to add more people to the box they're going to bring more you'll see it here's a run blitz okay bang and there's your smoke he knows exactly now he knows exactly taylor knows exactly what's going on here okay and we could have yeah. had a so we'll come over. I believe we changed the concept later in the game, okay? I think we come back with a slant later in the game. I'm not sure. We're actually teaching this block in a little different too now. We we actually – he will ooze and settle at about five. He's going to go get hip to hip, and they're actually going to double. The way we're teaching this now, they would double this screw down safety hip to hip as the corner comes down. He would snap off. His landmark would be five by two to the sidelines. So they're really running a combo block on this, and it's very similar to kick return. All right, go go over that again. The number one number one receiver, number three receiver is blocking that that number the guy covering number two. Yeah, and and whether we bubbled three and had these two guys ooze, and they're going to settle. They're going to settle right here on the spot and get hip to hip. They're going to take the most dangerous and double it. So you don't get that that force, that force player that just blows this thing up and sends it back in. We're going to try and knock it with leverage here. We're going to try and get hip to hip, okay? We're not doing it here. 
Uh, but this is what we're teaching now, hip to hip. And as mm -hmm. that corner comes down, okay, we should have secured the safety. He would snap off late, and we'd try and split these guys. And you can see right here, this is why we do it. With teams that play mini, uh, hard mini with this outside lev, we're going to go ahead and pin this thing hip to hip right here. So this thing doesn't get forced back into the – to the alley player, which is what he's trying to do. We're going to get hip to hip, bang, bang. Then your corner is going to do what? He's going to set the edge now. As he comes down, we'll snap off it. Okay, back to our two by two, okay? All right, we got a TFL right there. So, you know, hey, let's change things up. We get back to a wide zone here. Wide zone, okay, wide zone. Um, and this is when you're going tempo, a little harder here. We would say wide zone two, okay. If our mic was declared way back, if our mic was way back, we would point at front side, our, our wide out could go to the safety, okay. They're blocking front side. This is a triple read. We got a bubble. It's three over two out here, okay. He's straight off the end. If the end bends, he's pulling and running. OK, and this is where you get into um, this is where you get into. We got a bubble called, OK, if he bends, he can pull, he comes in. We are now smoking. This thing may happen five do yards downfield. We are running triple off of this guy. So, so how did y'all was it based off the run, whether it was going to be triple or whether it was going to be like good box, bad box or was there a tag? No, it was off the it was off the tag. It was off the bubble tag. Um, now we would say if you can't smoke it, if you're covered up out here, you are no longer running your hot RPOs. You are now running triple when you had a bubble tag. All right, if it was soft zone, you could pull and smoke. Once that came down, you are no longer running. Um, you are no longer running smoking it out here. You are now running triple off the end. Here's our wide zone here. Um, I love this. I love this on the back side. If you're not getting a lot of movement, if these guys aren't moving around, I love. We call this. Uh, we actually call it a gut on the back side, where we're going to set the edge with the three technique, so this thing can't fold. And we got a great rep here. Um, great job by our running back right here. We always said three steps after the mesh. But what does he do here? He is running on the heels of uh, the O-line here, and you can see him run this wave. Just riding this wave right here. I wish our right tackle on the pull would take his inside hand right here, put it right on his sternum, control with the left hand. We could get this washed all the way out. This is a big old crease right in the middle. I have a friend of mine who's a ninth-grade coach in Minnesota, and he wanted to know – is it the offensive line's fault or the running back's fault if the running back gets tackled and he doesn't set up his blocks? I said, dude, you're coaching freshman football. I mean, run to daylight. <laughs> like, get your best guy, hit the hole, offensive line stays on the block. He said, well, you got to teach the running back what to read. I mean, Gerard Johnson is, is hitting it where it is. I mean, talk a little bit about that. I mean, what's that, that, that is, that? Hey, coach, that's a great question. And <laughs> that is a great question. And it's, it's like this, we had a kid, Ray Lowry, you know, like, yeah, he was good. You, you, you don't want to, you don't want to tell him, Hey, read this, read that, you know, like, Hey, you don't have to tell him he's a speeding bullet, dude. He's oh, oh, we can run. Now, do we have our reads for yeah. all this stuff? Run this track right here and he'll, He'll find it. And it's, it's, it's interesting you brought that up. We actually – we have one of the better running backs at F, in FCS here at New well, Hampshire. Don't say that too loud, Coach. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, well, I mean, this is crazy. Yeah, and, Like, and, and, there could be guys watching this right now from some school. And, I mean it, – It's – it's it's uh, yeah, right. <laughs> um, and, and so we're running a lot of duo. He does an unbelievable job of 
sucking everybody in, tempo, sucking it all in, and then just spitting that thing out to the corner and, may, you know, just running by everybody. And he wants to be a, a pro football player. And, you know, we watch a lot of cuts and, you know, we're really studying McCaffrey and McCaffrey doesn't bounce that thing. He keeps it inside, you know, and he – because at the NFL level, you're not outrunning those guys, you know, at this level no. you are. And we're kind of in a dilemma, you know, like, oh, you know, hey, really, in theory, this ball should be stuffing. You play in the NFL, this ball's got – but you don't want to take that that creativity from him, you know. And yeah, you don't outrun people. Yeah, you you, you, you just, just don't play run ball. to the sideline like little league football. Yeah, you know? like you always see guys even in high school they run right to the sideline. Sideline, you know, and we're trying to get them downhill, downhill, but you don't want to take away his creativity. He's so good, you know. It's like, well, the read tells you this, and he makes it right, you know. If he if he doesn't, you know, it's it's a catch twenty two. You know, you you don't want to overcoach that running back, in my opinion. You know, sure, do we have reads? Yeah. What we're looking at, I care more about be on run your path. You know? The guy asked me, he said, who's the best running back coach? I said, well, who's got the best running back? There you go. <laughs> I said, Zach Kerr. Talk to Zach Kerr. He can coach running backs. I mean, <laughs> yeah. Whoever Zach coach Kerr Barry was Sanders was the best running back coach. Yeah. Like, I mean, that's what it is. We, we want to run our track. We'll tell them, <laughs> hey, peek this, peek, you know, blink this, read that. But if you got a good running back, you don't want to screw that guy up. You know, you want that kid to play fast. I think he's doing a great job. We tell him three steps after the handoff. He's running on the heels of the – he's not reading anything right here. He's running to, to, to yeah. color, you know. Boom, he's feeling it. Boom. It, yeah. Boom. All right, rewind that because I want to see what they're doing now because he's bringing boundary. But the safety So now we hit him with that wide zone. So what are they bringing? We hit him to the wide yeah. zone, into the boundary. I wish Taylor exactly. would do what here? I wish he would smoke this one. We come back with same side inside. I wish Taylor would throw off this right here. Okay. Because now if we do get that smoke, now we hit him. Yeah, the ball spits out. Oh. Yeah, it, it gets out. You know, this is what I'm saying. Like, are we going to yell? Are we going to come into the sideline and be like, what are you doing? You didn't throw? No. And be like, even, if, you know, we just say, hey, listen, if, if you get a tip on that field blitz here, and you can see this is clear as day. You get a tip on – I mean, that boundary blitz, you get a tip on that thing, we want to throw off it because that will get them out of run blitzing. You know, we're yeah. fortunate here. The ball spits out. We yeah. would have preferred – and that's something we would have said on the sideline. Hey, you get that blitz next time. If you feel that thing, let's throw off it. But this, this is right after we hit the – we had our back and sidecar on this side. We hit the wide zone to the left. What's the first thing they do? They bring boundary pressure. We come back with same side zone opposite. I mean, it's it's really – I hope nobody starts doing this, but it's really a great little sequence to, to run the outside zone away from the back and run same side inside zone. I mean, it's I almost think, like a counter. I think if, if, if you're doing this stuff, I think you have to have same side inside. You got to have something where you're, you're fudging the back, you're fudging the back's offset, where you're running opposite to it. Um, we got, you know, like I said, pref preferably I like to smoke it, but it's a good, that's hit. Ray. That's Ray right there. And no, this is, uh, this is actually our third guy. Uh, he was, he, uh, he's a Virginia kid. Um, kid from Phoebus? no, he's from, uh, he was a Woodbridge, maybe Forest Park. I think he played for Charlie Chandler. I, I could be wrong. Yeah. Uh, his name's Cam Boyd. He was a Northern Virginia kid. Mm -hmm. He was our third guy, and he was a dang good player. I mean, we we had good players. I mean, this we, is a great run. This is a great offense for a running back. I oh, mean, because whenever look, you look hand it off, face. man, it's like, hey, I'll tell you one thing: we are not better than those guys up front. Those no. guys are way better than we are. But there's just so much space, and Taylor always they did got a, yeah. They they got a guy that can fling it back there. Yeah, that's what they got to worry about. All the perimeter. All the per perimeter hits uh, mm -hmm. they're getting. Um, we go back to this. Um, what do we do we, when we get down in the red zone? We bring in the extra guy, our two back sets. And it's just going to be zone uh, RPO. Yeah, he's going he's gonna to smoke the – he's going to throw that fade out there, that flat route, because he knows yep. he's got man-to-man. -man. Access. Access. 
Access. I mean, what, what 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 if the corner took the flat? Then he'll just throw the fade. Throw the fade right over. I mean, yeah. Maybe it's some type of combo coverage here, which usually you don't get down here. And this is a good deal, too. I love fibbing formations. I, I love it. Um, unbalanced fib, all that stuff I think is great stuff. Uh, if we did get something here, yeah, you'd throw it over the top to the fade. Yeah, because we, they're playing their nickel to the field, um, you know, where, where there's not even a, they're a receiver. They're short. Yep. They're short here. Yes, they are short. And that's something, you know, we, we'll do here. Um, we'll get in a fib formation early on. And if they're going to play it like this, we're going to stay in it. We're going to explore Yeah, y'all could run to the left. Yep, they're short no matter how you, how you slice it. They're taking away the field. Okay, the snap sucks here. If you're going to run this stuff, you said you've got to be good. You know, this is a great job by Taylor. He still got it in there. Yep. I think this was a kid from Oscar Smith, Melvin Vaughn. Oh, he was uh, another good. really, really good player. All right, and this is, you know, this is when you start. This is the beauty of Taylor, and we do it here. We give our, our quarterback a lot of freedom, and we do it because he works at it, you know. We don't just say, hey, you know, you – we're doing this and figure it out. Our kid he's comes in that and works fade up at top. It. What's that? Uh, he's going to go to the fade up top. Uh, I'm, he's checking to the inside. He saw the Mike walk in. Mike walked in. He sees grass. Safety's on the hash. He sees grass. This is something we had talked about on the sideline. Here he goes. He's checking it. Mike walks in the box. Oh. Bang. Mike had been playing out here. Mike walks in now. Bang. Here comes your slam. That's nasty. Yep. Yeah, good luck covering that man-to-man -man, 10 yards off. Yep. And we, we it all set up because we were running the ball. You know, um, they were playing that five box. We were running the ball a little bit. They moved that mic in. Bang. And the, the beauty – and Taylor checked this right here. We were probably in a zone call. He's checking the protection he, to a three-step cut protection. First down. And now, now they got to make a decision again. All right. They just hit us with that. What are we going to do with our mic? Yeah. All he's doing is finding grass, finding where the space is. There you go. Back to our two by two. This one's easy as can be. Okay. What are we doing? We're placing the field blitz. That's all we're doing. This is another Virginia kid. I believe this is Vinny Lowe from Grassfield. Um, but all, like I said, just replacing the field blitz. And this this gives D coordinators fits, you know. You're bringing a run blitz to try and take away the run. You smoke a 10-yard hit. Easy throw and catch. You know, you're 40 for, for you know, 50 at the end of the day. Now, it's it's hard here because, uh, you know, I'm hard. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of hard on our, our QB coach and our QB here about the completion percentage. You know, it's at 62, whatever. We, we don't get these smoke. You know, when you when you start packing it in and, we don't get these smoke bubbles that we get, you know, like in the spread offense where, you know, you go 38 for 52 and, you know, it's a little – your completion percentages take a little dip in the, in the pro-style stuff, which is okay. You know, I thought it was fascinating when Shane told me <clears throat> that the Texans, when they came in to, to look at Taylor, they, they wanted to know exactly where every – completion was thrown and how far because sometimes when you're running this style of offense you know the stats can kind of be misleading on where the ball is actually being completed you know right right and um you know i think it's all our quarterback here is very accurate uh taylor was a real accurate passer um you know taylor's completion per percentage is off the charts because of this stuff and coach here's a great example so we check to the inside slant. I know we're getting closer to the red zone. Um, 
they, they keep the mic in because we're running the ball. Well, we had just hit him on the inside slant, so now they covered down on it. All right, now we're going to work the one-on-one -on -one this way. So we're running the same side zone. You can see our back clean it up, turns into a protection. And right. who is that up top? Is that Duhart? Uh, it's, I believe it's Melvin. Let me see. Pascal or Melvin Vaughn? Yeah, because he, he looks way bigger than their corner. Yeah, that's that's Melvin Vaughn. He, he's a 225-pound, uh, really, H-back. Big body. Okay, but like I said, all right, they tuck this guy in to take away the run while we hit him on this. Well, now they're covering down. Well, where's your matchup? And Taylor would sit there and take the easiest completion, easiest completion. Okay, this one's a, a little less percentage with the press man, but – that's the one-on-one. -on -one. That's what they're giving you. There you go. <laughs> there you go. So they, now, same. We're going to take away the run, put the sixth guy in. Well, we can't give up that slant. Well, we just got beaten press down in the red zone, so now we're going to play off. Gift, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, he, he just, you know, getting to every spot you need to get to. And you'll hear the, the spread guys, all they talk about is grass. Where's the grass? Where's the grass? That's where the grass is right there. Wide open. He's me Easy pitch hit. and catch. I believe there's a first down play for 10. <laughs> so now what do they do? Six box, come up and press. Back off a little bit. There's his easy completion. I mean, he he did, he did that with the Redskins, man, all the time. When number three receiver was that kid, uh, you know, McLaurin. I mean, he just ripped people apart, man. Yeah, like, McLaurin's the number three receiver, and he's just like running a hitch. He just bangs it right in there. Yep. Yeah. And, and like I said, he's he's taking the easiest completion right here. Easiest completion. Uh, this is good stuff right here. This is all. This is one game. You know. Running the same plays over and over again. Now, he could have thrown this up top. Um, we were big, Coach. If we get double A, a gap plug right no. here, or if we get some cross plug, um, I harp on the give the ball. I love running the ball versus this. Doesn't work out here, okay? But if we put our head in front here, head in front here, I love run. And if he bends and – Quarterback can go, shouldn't bend, but I love running the ball versus double A gap pressure. I mean, you got five yards, I think. I mean, yeah, I could we be were wrong. stuffing it in there. You know, uh, like I said, we're out man here know. as far as who we're playing against. Yeah. Uh, we, we will check. If we get double A gap, we will check the inside zone and try and run it against it. Okay. Great example here. Yeah. We're running, we're running a wide zone to the right which would tell us so we tag this one. Normally we'd block if we were one and wide two, but we put a tag on this one. And we said we would call it X hitch or whatever, whatever we called it. I can't remember. Yeah, but I mean, the, corner, exactly the corner's scared to get four, hit. With the hit for four the over hit. three, four over three, five box now. So he's probably thinking give. Well, now you get your run blitz from the boundary. Where's your grass out to the field? If you're going to run this, your quarterback has to have the ability to pop his hips and throw it. And I don't see a lot of fancy drills or stuff that the quarterback's doing. I mean, he's sticking the ball in there. He's turning. He's throwing it. I mean, he's – Yeah, man, this one – get rid of it. Your quarterback has to, has to work on this one. Um, that one takes practice – to feel comfortable doing it. Um, you know, there are some throws that are, are you know, if you're trying to throw a speed out the other way, that's, that's very Did he difficult. throw with the seams? What's that? Did he throw with the seams? Um, I'm not sure. I I doubt a lot of times that he, he could get, like this one maybe he did, but he's catching that thing snapping out. I mean, you got to have the ability to throw without seams. There you go. 
four over three, five box, support. Bang. So basically, they're just bringing the blitz to where they think the outside zone is coming. They're bringing they're blitzing based off where the back is aligned. Yes, we're throwing off the blitz. All right, we'll get out of the end. So this is a new game here. You know, um, same thing. We're going same side inside, same side inside. They have three over two, six box. Where's his grass? His grass is here off the safety. Bang. First and 10. We got six. We're stealing. We're stealing six yards here. Stealing. You know, and that box is probably dictated by us. I don't know if we played Rice after NC State or whatever, but it was dictated off the run. We were running the ball. When this same side inside zone, um, d- does the running back know – before the snap that he's gonna that he's gonna throw it, he, and if he so does, if Taylor if knows he's full slide. If, if, if and we do it here, if our guy knows he's throwing, it, we, we would wave him or tell him, "Hey, make a call or something." Yeah, we would say something to him to go block, and, and then it would become basically you got same side inside zone going there. Basically, the back's gonna be responsible for that backside defensive end. So it's it basically turns into three step slide. three step protection is what it turns into. With your back knocking off the edge. All right. <laughs> A chess game, right? Six box. We just hit them with the inside. Uh, the inside hitch. What do they yeah. do now? Now they can put the safety over number two and they can bring yep. that guy to the field. Yep. And here you go. This is a give all day. This should hit. All right. doesn't hit here, but we got exactly, exactly – Exactly what we wanted. Taylor's dead right here. You can see it walks out. Bang. We got the box. Uh, we just don't block it. That's yeah, the box. Did a good job. Right I mean, the, the, that? Mike Backer did a good job. Good job. Yeah. Hey, this is Big Fish. He was a Richmond kid as well. Yeah, he's from L.C. Bird. What, yeah. Yep. Good kid. That, that's exactly what should have happened right there. Run run that back. This one? Right. Th- yeah, I, I want to see this. Yeah, three over two up top. Three over two. Yeah, two, two over two in the balance. I, I agree all day. All day with Taylor here. Now, if he pulled and snapped this to the hitch, fine. We would say here you're good, good. Good, good. But he's putting this guy in conflict. Even if this guy does fold in now, we're getting four. You can see – where their free hitters are coming from. They're coming from, you know, three yards removed from the box with two shuffle read steps. We're getting four before they make contact. Here's Gerard here. Good finish, good rep. But you can see how far those guys got to come. And then you keep giving it, they'll start creeping in more, and I smoke your itch. It's it's not uh, rocket science, you know, like we try and make it to be sometimes. Mm-hmm. He's going to the boundary. This is great, and this is where – this is beauty by Taylor. Right, this is a bad call. I don't – this is a bad call by, by me here. You don't want to run hitch. You want slants or fade or, you know – Inside fade, you don't want hitches down here. But with this guy, 14, if it was wrong, he usually made it right. Puts himself in a triple. Finds his way home. I agree with everything. Five box. Uh, Taylor's looking, Mike is removed. Taylor will be looking through the safety in the corner. This is exactly what we want. I love this concept up top, the three slants. We said one, three, five. If you're getting many, and I believe we do it in this game, if you're getting many with that outside lev, I love throwing this tempoed 
three-step slant, working for width with tempo, snapping it in. This is one of my favorite concepts. We got it in here. I, I really like it. They got no run support. Boom. No, no, it's it's good stuff. Really good stuff. You can see we got a great box here. We got great angles. Gerard does a good job here, Coach, uh, finding it and, and uh, getting us 10. All right. Man, so what do they do? <laughs> There's your safety now. And now no safeties. He's going. He's going to put it down here. I. Uh, I mean, he, he, he's, he's good. Do whatever good he wants. He, he's good. He could have taken. I believe that's uh, Pascal. Pascal, really good football player, playing in the NFL. Really good player. He had his option, and this is, you know, this is kind of Taylor was always. If they were going to give him a completion, fight board him. He was going to take it all day, all day. You know, and, and he would get back to his fades if it was all pressed down. But he was going to take yards all day. Yeah. Right? And it They're goes back to the, the – you don't go broke making a, taking a profit, you know. There it is. Boom. Great job. You can see our one step by number three running under the mic. Tempo three step. This kid was a – he was a one hell of a player, uh, Antonio Vaughn. Yeah, uh, I couldn't believe he never got a shot. Um, he's one of my favorite players of all time. Just his work ethic, attitude. He was, he was something else. He's from a uh, Husky. Mm -hmm. Oscar Smith. I think he went to. I think he went to Bertie. Oh, did he? Yeah, he was Bertie. Yeah, I think if I can remember correct, I could be wrong. This, this is. I love this concept, especially teams are playing many. When you say playing mini, what does that mean? Uh, the outside leverage. You know, you're either playing palms with the too high safety, uh, the, the outside leverage uh, bracket coverage. They're outside on number two. Yeah. And they're bracketing that thing. They're basically saying, hey, you're not going to throw the field. We're going to leverage you and put an edge on the defense outside of two. Well, now we're going to exploit that edge. Right now we'll get back to the, you know, safety down. You know, and this is another one we probably said, hey, listen, let's take a shot. We've got a good matchup here to the boundary. And to be honest with you, I don't know how this comes back in, um, why you come, but it works out, you know. <laughs> Two good players. Zero. Yeah. We, we, this is great stuff. They've got too many in the box. Now they got an issue. Now they got to make a decision. Are we going to sit there and leave that corner on an island? This is beauty right here. Beauty. Six box. Hey, you that got the mini down right. here. Bang. That's where the grass is. That's where the void is. That's what they're giving you right here. Just dinking and dunking your way down the field. It should be a run. Yep. I mean, I could tell you right. I could tell you right when it's gonna, everything's gonna five box. Safety's bailing. This should be a rip. Yeah, there's a hit. Uh, it, it, it used to look so easy with uh, 14 back there. Yeah. Makes me want to run this stuff. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Not, not quite as out, easy but... as it looks, but this is the idea. We got the box. There's your hit. Yep. Okay. So we hit them with the, we hit them with the fade earlier. Okay. Now they're going to insert for the run. Now we're going to take access with an easy hitch. Yep. 
Yeah, it's just making the defense miserable. Backed up. What are they giving you? Six yeah, blocks. You, yeah. Bang. Man. Great job here. Like I said, this is one you got to work on. This is work. Putting it in, spinning back. You know, we're backed up. Now the ball's out. Mm. Yep. It's, it's you could you could tell just safety's down, press. We're going to the one on one. Uh that's either I believe that's big Melvin Vaughn from Oscar Smith or him or Pascal. I think that's Melvin. Yeah, that's you know, it all looks so easy. Well, we're winning our one on ones here too. You know, Taylor's getting to the right spots and we had really, really, really good players out there at wideout that created mismatch problems. This is the same side inside zone. I'll be honest with you, Coach. <laughs> I forgot how much I like same side inside zone. I like and same side inside zone and, and mid zone away from the back. That's yeah, that, like a that, combination. That's, that's a good combo. I haven't watched this stuff in a while. <laughs> Dusted this stuff off the shelf. I forgot how good this stuff was. Like that. Dang. Hey, getting down near the red zone, so we'll bring the extra back in. Oh, uh, I put um, just some confusion here between Taylor and our wide out. He wants to take the one on one in the boundary. Um, we got a little mishap here, and but this is this is good here too. Like, really, he shouldn't do this on an RPO. This ball should run, fall down at the line of scrimmage. You know, he's kind of making – if it's wrong, he's making it right. Awesome. Awesome stuff. Awesome stuff. Three over two down here to the bottom – down here to the boundary. Okay, the free hitter's coming in late. There's big Gerard. Powerful kid running through tackles. Again, down in the red zone. Down in the red zone, too high look. We got an extra guy in. Like I said, this is a former quarterback. It was a hell of a quarterback for us. Knocking the edge off here. Hmm. But the too high look, Taylor knows right away. He's, he's not reading anything now. He, he's going to give the ball. Too high look. You got access. Here's your one three five. Okay. We don't take this one a lot, but with the mic in, Taylor's just working off the mic. He's got safety help over here, so he's off that. We're we're dead up here. It's really off the mic. If the mic expands, he's gonna give. If not, he's gonna throw. Stu Steven agrees, Coach. The same side inside is a hidden gem. Hidden gem. I, I agree. I agree. I'm, coach, this is third and seven. We're running inside zone RPO. You know, like. Yep. He's got all his options. This is a seven-man fire, cover zero. He's going to take his easiest throw. He knows right now I'm going to the boundary, easy throw. Catch, bang, first down. The beauty of all this, too, I mean, we haven't run a lot of different schemes up front, you know. So those guys get it all work. They get so many reps and can sort out all the blitzes running the same stuff. I mean, really, really it ain't any drop back. I mean, it's all – this is all – I mean, it's all – This is right. Team. We'll get to some drop back here in a second. Oh, we will? Okay, good. Here's your too high look. Obviously, they're screwing the safety in. Hey, but he's coming from so deep. 
we got our inside fade here. He's running inside fade, slant. They they know they're not getting the ball here. Great job. Way to get Divide there, zone. Man. And we were running this B gap zone like Strollo was talking. That's the first zone I ever learned was Strollo's B gap zone. And um it was he let's just say he knew what he was doing. You know, Strollo could coach that thing. When he was at ball state, um they were running B gap. That's all they ran, and the ball was just going down the field. It was wild. It was good. It was fun to watch. Okay, changing the scheme a little bit. Not a lot. Just adding an insert guy. RPO in here. He had the option here to take his hitch into the boundary. Didn't like what the Will linebacker was doing. When in doubt, give the ball. Nothing wrong with this right here. No. There you go. Will steps in, access. Take that all day. And this stuff's great, too. If you're getting a bunch of, you know, I know, uh, like when Heatherman was at JMU, uh, corner blitz, safety blitz, field nickel, just going through his Rolodex, and they were really, really good. Our guy, our, our defensive coordinator here is doing the same, you know, really, really good at what he's doing. This is good answers to your run blitz stuff. And that's the biggest difference. You know, I love this under center, what we're doing, all this stuff. You know, the, the hardest thing to deal with is that run blitz when you're under center. Same thing. Too high look. Too high look. We're giving the ball. We're going to run the ball. You got great numbers. And if our, our running back does make one person miss, it's going to be an eight, nine yard hit every time. That too high, Taylor, no, he's giving the ball. This is a good little zone right here. We're going to bend off the nose. Beauty. Too high look. Mike's tucking himself in. If he would have gave this, I would have said, you're right. If he throws it, gets completion, you're right. It's good, good. Taking space, manipulating the mic. This is a third down right here. Great answer. Great answer to your corner fire. And if you said, if I, if I was a defensive coordinator, I think in first and 10, second and run, I would corner fire probably 70% of the time. It's tough to deal with. This is the best answer right here. Placing the blitz. Just stealing yards. Did you feel nickel fire? And this is what you see all the time with your run blitzes. This is what you get. He gives it here. I would have loved to see him take the boundary hitch. I know we're not throwing, but that mic is so displaced off that. You'd love to take it off the field nickel, but that mic is so displaced. I would have said take access. He may have been spooked thinking the DN may cop under it. Is he wrong here? No. Nope. We just talked through it. Talked through it, you know. We'd love to replace it with the with the boundary hitch. This is how this is how we used to play. 56-51. <laughs> About 20 possessions each team. Wild stuff. 
Don't play like that here at New Hampshire anymore. Ten possessions, we're good. There you go, seven blocks, third down, taking the matchup. That's his best matchup. Mm. So that was our pretty much our that was just three games right there of just um uh, RPO zone RPO stuff. That, that was just three games. That's how we played the tempo, the whole thing. He handled the whole thing. Um this is some of our drop back here. This is just four verts. I I'm a huge vertical, you know, uh proponent. Um I love I, – I prefer four verts out of three-by-one open, um, but we do it here out of all our different sets, condensed sets, bunch sets. Um, I love four verticals. And I love the check down on four verts to the back. We always – we take our back to the vendor. Not everybody do does that. You know, I hear people, oh, well, if the mic's over here, the back's going to run this way. If the mic's here, the back's going to go to the field. I have no idea how to tell the quarterback when his eyes are downfield. He he, We get beat up front. He gets a fastball. How the heck is he going to know where the running back is? We, we dictate which way he's going. So that quarterback knows, hey, our old lineman whiffs, which you hope doesn't happen. But guess what? It does happen. Our back is going to be at a spot where he knows it is. So we dictated our bender to the boundary here. Our quarterback is – we got a too high look. Obviously, if we got pressed with the corner, we could work the safety. But our quarterback knows if that will drops it all, our back is going to replace the will. They're trying to get there with the mic. Great job here by Gerard. And we were huge and, you know, philosophically, we loved – we didn't want the back – you know, some people say, hey, give me a chip, give me a chip. We didn't want to give Chip. Now, if he got a fastball, we would whiff. Sure, he would take it. Um, but we wanted him out because he would get him the ball. You see how he doesn't mess around with anything inside. He's trying to get to his spot. He's replacing that will that's taking the bender. I love calling this on first down. Get me a completion to the back. Lift the coverage. And you're getting an extra touch for your running back. Uh, two by two, four verts, our bender to the boundary. So this is first down, okay, with four verts. Now, you're probably saying, why wouldn't he rip the bender here? He could. He could rip the bender. That's actually, I think that's big do heart right there. But he knows it's first down. Okay, if he rips that bender and he doesn't complete it, he's in second and ten, he knows. If I check down, it's second and three. He knows we'll get back to it. He's going to put himself in a good set. Like I said, that's why he's, you know, 70% completion percentage. Same thing. This is why we don't want the back. We don't want the back in there chipping and messing around. Drives me crazy. Get the back out. Four verts, bender into the boundary. Same thing. If he ripped that bender, is he wrong? No. Is that kind of a tight window? Sure. But what's he got? That wheel is getting dropped. He knows he's replacing it. Second and ten. Now he's put himself in third and one. Three by one. Okay. We put a shallow tag on this one. This is my favorite run, way to run verse, but we put a shallow tag. He'll become uh, the shallow across the field. Um, we're doing this a little different now. 
We're actually meshing our back. We're not flaring them. We're meshing our back with the shallow. Okay, he's opposite hash vert. Okay, we're telling him two yards outside the hash. I love running outside of that mini coverage, that outside lev. You can see him bend back to his landmark. And something we're not really talking about here, um, Taylor's pocket skills, his feet, his athleticism were elite. You can see him bounce. He he was great at dropping a nine, ten, popping up to six. He could really set the edge rush um, with his drop. He was outstanding at it. There you go. This is one with the shallow coming across three by one vert. Okay. He's going near hash here. Safety on the near hash turns in. He could throw either one. Obviously, we're running by here with, with Vaughn. His landmark's two yards outside the hash. Three by one. Okay. Here's verticals. We're going to motion our back out. We would declare who now becomes our basically check down. Three by one. Opposite hash vert. Vert. Near hash vert. Single post. Man coverage. If we have man, our opposite hash vert. We'll turn into like a rolling dig. Okay, we will snap that across. That becomes viable. We won't keep it vertical and man. You can see Taylor's holding the safety here. You see his eyes hold the safety, pop up. This is what I was saying about protection. We were really big on protections, making sure everything was picked up. Great pocket skill. So this, okay, this is a concept we had hot and cold. And I don't like, on third down, I don't like to change. I don't like to change our concepts week to week on third and long. You get too much different stuff. You know, I just like to change the way it looks. Now, we didn't have to here. Our hot, we're running a middle go, right down the middle. Now, we're starting to change this. It, he should be grabbing two. We're changing this now to where he can roll it across, okay? He'll have the dig. He'll have the slant, or if it's zone coverage, he'll whip it out. Great job here, picking up the blitz. And Taylor has his options here. He could take the dig and man coverage, comes open a little bit late. He's got his shallow, and obviously there's a big, huge run lane in there. Six-man pressure. Not able to pop up here. They stuffed the middle. Good job by our, our our middle go here, clearing this out. Like I said, now we're rolling that, so you almost get two digs off of cover one. But we got a great matchup. We're clearing that out. We got a great matchup with our best player on their safety. You can see Taylor, Taylor's uh, running the whole thing up front. That's something we game plan hard, where we're setting the protection. We say, and we still say it here, quarterback's God. He makes a call, we run it, we don't argue it. 
We run it. That's what we're running, whatever he says. Same thing. Got a matchup on the safety, cover one, get the clear with the middle go. Pretty good tempo here. Um, you know, Taylor's really good at throwing the ball. Really good. Under pressure. Same thing. Cold. Okay, now you get a too high look. All right? His first read will take – if we can split this down the middle, he's going to take it. Okay? Feels like the safety's over the top. This is what I was saying about – your quarterback dropping, getting depth to nine, popping back up. What does that do? Sets the launch point for the DN to come high. We stress, be firm inside so he can set this thing, help this tackle up, get this guy coming high so we can pop up under it. Same thing, picking up the blitz. Okay, very similar concept. I think the last, we called the last one cold. This one's hot. We're just going to switch our outside and inside guy. He'll now take the dig. He'll now take the whip. They like said, we're starting to roll this across versus man coverage. So you almost got two digs. It becomes a viable option. Great job here by Taylor setting it high. Boom, pop up under. They brought four to that side. Four to that side. We actually pushed it out. would like to see Gerard stay with this thing. Falling in here. We're back to cold now. Okay, just taking a matchup. Everything's spinning now. Everything's spinning. We're getting some type of three cloud or uh, flow coverage. Everything's spinning. Going matchup. And these we didn't run a ton of concepts, coach. We didn't. We ran the same concepts because we always felt they had answers for all coverages. One high, two high, man. Okay, we miss there. Okay, running cold. Here's your lift. Trying to take two. Now, like I said, we're starting to roll this now with a dig. So that's a viable option. This is the matchup we want. Speed dig on the safety. Our outside guy should keep this one on the moon move, man coverage. Oh, here you go. Single post safety's down. He's gonna take a quick peek, see if we get a release. If he doesn't get a release. He's back over. Dig. This one would have come to the return. This should have snapped back out. He would have come all the way back across. That would have been where we would have ended up. We get a clean release by the X. We got no problem with that taking that. Same plays, same plays, same games. Okay. That middle goal is clearing it out. You can tell we hit that one before. He's got a clean release. You can see his eyes, though. This safety is now cheating over. You can see the safety. This is why we run the same plays. He knows where his guys are going to be. Great job setting the launch point for the DNs to get upfield. See how deep he's getting a pop up. Pop up. 
Got to be firm inside. Here's your matchup on the safety with the dig. Okay, so that was hot and cold. This is cross. Everybody's running it. Whatever you're running down here at the bottom, we're running bubble go. Some teams are on corner, flat, whatever you're doing down here. Here's your cross concept off of the wide zone action. We can progress and read this one, one to two to three to four to five. Okay, we ran cross here. He's going to start fade, flat, hate it with this guy off. I shouldn't have done this. Like it when he's on cross. We don't run the dig. We run a curl. We run a curl on the backside. A lot of people are running digs. It scares me in zone coverage when your dig is number four. Coming back to that thing late is a possible interception. See here, one, two covered. Three, that cross, taking a long time because I got him back off the ball like an idiot. But here comes your curl, running right back to the quarterback. I love progression reads. I feel like they help you manipulate coverage, bringing your eyes all the way back across. Same thing. Here's cross. We go one on the fade, two on the flatter bubble, whatever we're running. Like I said, we could change that concept up. Three on the cross, four on the curl, five on the back. The back comes open all the time on this, all the time. One, no, two, no. Here comes three. Man coverage. You can see him snapping it across on man. Great job negative breaking here. Well, this is a good rep off the wide zone action. You can see we got the linebackers sucked in it. I think this is a great job by a curl down here at the bottom. Great separation, running back to the quarterback. If he did have to get through three, if three wasn't winning, four is wide, five, five's uh, covered, but four would be a viable option. Yeah, I had a couple more dropbacks in here. Oh, this is just a little junk play. A little draw we were running. That's Gerard. This is a good concept we ran. Uh, we called it uh, ZIT, I believe, Z Z N. Um, the progression read, you can see we got a great triangle read here. Bang. We would start five man flare the back two to the, we called it a wiggle three to the dig four, four to the whip. You can see we got a great triangle going here after we come off the back. This is one of my favorite concepts. I'll finish on this one right here, Coach, if that's all right with you. Yeah, Coach. Thank you. We call this one dart. Middle go. Inside fade. Dart five yards over the X. Okay, this is a two high, one high read. All right, if it stays too high, we're going to work middle go to dart. If it flows or goes to cover one, Glance to flare. See the safety on the boundary. Had that safety stayed off the hash, we'd be going middle go to dart, working the mic. Safety flows. We're going to work the glance. You can see we, throw, we rip a, a glance in there.
same play, change the concept into the boundary, same read. Okay, middle go. We put it, we tag this one with an out cut. You can see they're jumping over on the on a, on a glance. We get the check down here. Now we come back, same exact play, come back to the glance again, I believe. All right. <laughs> Five man pressure. We are hot here. We are hot. You can see we ran, we mixed in that out cut instead of the glance. Now we come back to the glance, wide open. Okay, dart, safety, if safety's off the hash, we're going middle go to dart. When do you get to your hash fade? Cover one. If that's the matchup, they got a safety or a nickel cover in that, that's when you want to get to your hash fade. This one's incomplete, but this this is a good read. Good play by them. Good play by that corner. I'll stop it there for you, Coach. I'm gonna take I'm gonna take the video off. Okay. Coach, thank you so much for coming on. And Coach, I had a I hadn't I hadn't watched that stuff in a long time. I'm glad yeah. I did. <laughs> I don't I mean, think anyone's ever talked about it before, you know? No, yeah, no. It's uh it was really fun. It's a great offense. I know uh I think you might see it at Old Dominion again with Deck down there now. He did. He's running the same stuff at, 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 that he was. At, we played them. Uh, he's the new OC at Fordham. Um, he's a New Hampshire kid. Played quarterback here. I think won the CAA, and I think he was the quarterback in 2014 here. He's running this stuff, and we played him in the playoffs this past year. I think Old Dominion is going to get back to uh, having a lot of fun on offense with this. That's awesome. This spread, you know, I th and you guys in Virginia will like it. Yeah, Coach. Well, thank you. I'll hit you up soon, Coach. Hey, I enjoyed it. Area. I enjoyed it. I'll be in touch, okay? Yes, sir. Thank you. Make sure you tell Gerard I said hello, and I'll be in touch with him as well. Yes, sir. All right, bud. Good seeing you. See you, Brian.